Hello again. Happy October. It is the fall season. It's time for the harvest, but sadly, it's also time for the lice harvest. October, November, these are peak head lice seasons for two reasons. The kids have been back to school all throughout September. They've had a chance to socialize, get to know one another, and the lice have had their time to do the same as well. We are also heading into our Halloween season and there are a lot of people out shopping for Halloween costumes. So I'm here today to give parents a couple of tips on how you can prevent getting lice this peak season and some key things and takeaways that would be of help to you. Number one, this is the time of year where you want to take a peek once a week. If you check ahead, you avoid the spread and head lice are a lot easier to manage if you've caught it early. Now when you're out doing your, your shopping for your Halloween costumes, trying on things, just inspect them first. If it's a mask or a hat or a wig, um, please just have a visual look at it, give it a good shake perhaps. Uh, just because lice do transfer primarily through head to head and hair to item contact. So if you don't do any of those two things, you're very unlikely to get head lice in the first place. Now, the other thing is we are working really hard right now uh, to bring back some form of policy to the school boards, which uh, will help reduce the amount of active lice in the classroom. Right now, children are allowed to come to class with active bugs in their hair. The know that policies that were taken away several years ago um, are no longer in place, so schools are not checking. They're not um, sending children home with, with active bugs. And I'd like to see some sort of new policy that's fair and equitable to all stakeholders put back in place. And so there's a link in the description below that uh, will send you to the survey. And I would really appreciate if you share it um, uh, and take it for yourself. The more signatures I have, the more, you know, uh, superhero power I will have to take to policymakers and start a conversation on what can we do to maybe bring back like a head lice reduction or a head lice prevention policy where we're being a little more proactive and, uh, you know, not allowing kids with the active bugs themselves to be attending class because we all know Lice is the second most communicable affliction next to the cold in children and it's highly contagious and especially the bugs and the eggs not so much. So I would really appreciate anyone um, watching this to uh, click that link and take the survey. Also uh, we have our LiceSquad.com and our SuperheroKids.ca store links below. If you need any hair care products, uh, everything you need is there. All of our products are made with the natural, most natural ingredients. They're all designed for chemically sensitive people, uh, people that um, you know can't have scents or parabens or any type of sulfates or uh, they're even tear free. So we've really made a, a, an effort to create products with that uh, need in mind. And um, yeah, basically I just wanted to say happy fall and please just be vigilant and do your, your regular screenings uh, for lice because again, we are in peak lice season, probably toward the end of November. Uh, the, the next peak lice season is January, February. So basically after any major school break or any major holiday, we see a spike because uh, the children are being put into different care settings or they're seeing a lot of friends and family in social settings like Christmas, lots of hugging, Thanksgiving, lots of hugging, you know, Halloween, dressing up and sharing hair items. Uh, you know, after March break, similar situations. So those three key peak life seasons are when we're gonna see a spike and when you should really be checking your children on a regular basis. Again, uh, happy fall. Thank you for watching. Please click the link to take the survey below. And as always, have yourself a lice-free day.